the Murkoff Corporation. A company featured in the Outlast Horror Game Trilogy was an American transnational company that owned many high-class physical and digital security properties. However, this industry's activity was actually really a front to hide the reality of the unethical and downright despicable corporation that was hiding from the public. By the time of the game, Murkoff had several different divisions and operations that split the corporation into more manageable sections. These included the Murkoff Hardline Security, Murkoff Research and Development, and Murkoff Psychiatric Systems. Murkoff Hardline Security was a unit responsible for the development and of the security forces during outbreaks and other corporate containment uh, operations and security breaches. This included a number of PMCs or private military contractors, which were seen deployed to the Mount Massive Asylum during the War Rider outbreak. Murkoff Research and Development is a branch that is responsible for the development and implementation of their technology, genetic and psychological advancements into the War Rider project. However, it was also involved with the front of the business of cyber security and finding potential areas for making profit and also work to develop these into working models. Murkoff Psychiatric Systems is a collection of doctors, scientists, etc. that oversaw the medical side of Project War Rider at the Mount Massive Asylum. However, this did expand to include security guards who worked with the patients at Mount Massive for the purpose of creating super soldiers using a swarm of specific molecules produced through psychomatic direction utilizing the morphogenic engine. One notable plan uh, to move forward in the War Rider project and the engine alike where R&D and MPS were, were consulting together was the inclusion of female patients notably suggested by executive at Murkoff, Richard Traeger. The known and notable personnel of Murkoff include the likes of many different subgroups which included the global departments which included those who were held at a higher position in the company and were responsible for either the creation, running, managing or other higher duties of the company. This included individuals such as Jeremy Blair, Alan Turing and Rudolf Warnick. The science division included Alan Turing, Rudolf Warnick and a collection of lesser knowns like Steve, Andrew, Andrew's unnamed colleague, Carl Houston, Garrett Snow, Samuel, Rule Rosette, F. Ford, Zeschner, and Bruce Newhouse. In the terms of the legal department, we really only know of Helen, Gre Helen Grainer. The insurance and mitigation department included mitigation officers Paul Marion and Pauline Gleek. The business development unit consisted of board of directors and executives like Richard Traeger. The Department of Human Resources and Corrections included Silas Kinsley. The Department of Historical Refinement included Clyde Perry. The IT department involved the work of Michael Haas, Wayland Park, and Wayland's unnamed colleague. Murkoff Hardline Security included Stevenson, Daniels, Campbell, and even Chris Walker. And a number of other employees were also uh, involved in different areas of the company. Some included the ones mentioned before. However, those that were not included were Grant Willard, Simon Peacock and Jennifer Rowland. The Murkoff Corporation, often simply referred to as the Murkoff Corp or Murkoff, was first developed sometime around the 1940s during the events of World War II. The corporation was first founded and contributed to by both Alan Matheson Turning and Rudolf Gustav Wernick in response to the growing threat of world domination by Nazi Germany and other hostile world leaders in the future. Following into the early 1950s, these two astounding scientists built a front for the company being a public information security provider. However, behind the veil, work quickly began on super soldiers and super weapon testing that would be able to defend the world against any hostile force. With the technological limits of the time 
Uh, very little was achieved, however, over the following 60 year period, some advances would be made in nanotechnology research, genetic research, and most importantly, the morphogenic engine program, and would eventually be the accumulation of all their hard work. After the war ended, many Nazi and American scientists were hired to assist in the project's creation. Eventually, the project saw itself being contracted by the US government under a branch of the CIA to assist in Project MK Ultra, which was a CIA mind control program. Which in, uh, I might add, was actually a real thing in real life that actually existed. Uh, I would go and uh, research a little bit of that because it's shocking what the US government was willing to do to its own people. Anyway, officially sanctioned in 1953, officially sanctioned in 1953, Murkoff was eventually able to use the government's almost unlimited budget and unrestricted access to information, materials and test subjects to greatly advance their knowledge of human genetic and uh, the connections between human genetics and the connection between the human uh, consciousness ability to influence our own genetic makeup and information. They were able to develop an early version of nanotechnology and started work on the first generation of morphogenic engine trials on human test subjects. The first tests really were in order to, uh, to create a mind control process in subjects in order for the CIA to have a new weapon to use in their highly unethical toolbox for interrogations and sleeper agent programs that had been set up around the world. After leaked documents fell into the wrong hands and questions began to be asked by the public about the government spending uh, directly related to Project uh, MKUltra, over time funding was slowly reduced up until 1973 where the entire CIA project was ordered by CIA director of the time, Richard Helms, to be destroyed, along with all documents and materials pertaining to it. Seeing the end of their cooperation in sight, and the end of their endeavours for a safer world, Murkoff quickly acted to steal as much of the information they had been provided by the government as possible, as many materials as they could get a hold of, and as many people as they could muster, and went into a brief hiding period as the US government, the public and the CIA clawed at each other's throats. While this was a setback for the corporation, it did quickly recover, and because of their involvement with the CIA, their research was made their research made massive progress and was moved ahead decades. So now they were well ahead of their expected time frame, and now they decided on how exactly they could make the world a safer place. The corporation had both its weapons. This was of course the Project Wall Rider an initiative that would have seen the accumulation of their consciousness, genetic and nanotech research come to fruition. The goal was to create a swarm of nanoscaled machine organisms that could create an individual and act as a collaborative unit. Eventually, in the following 30 year span, Funding their research into nanotechnology with the front of the business now being directed towards cyber security, Murkoff were able to successfully create a functional nanite swarm. However, there was one slight drawback, and that was that not even the most powerful supercomputer AIs could control and maneuver the swarm effectively. And so the final stage of the project needed to be completed. Project Wall Rider would need research to, con to continue with the morphogenic engine, designed heavily in part by the elderly Dr. Rudolf Warnick, and developments made by the late Dr. Alan Turing. This process took human test subjects and subjected them to the most horrifying and mind-breaking psychological torments in order to unlock, in order to unlock a conscious state of the human brain, which could allow it to have a near superhuman ability to rewrite its own genetic code and also enter into an almost spiritual like state allowing it to be linked and take control of the nanite swarm. Under the guise of a charitable organisation, 
Murkoff opened the Mount Massive Asylum in 2009 as its first facility for work on the engine whilst also setting up an array of radio and visual transmitters in the Arizona canyons close to a populated farming town. Mount Massive Asylum was to serve as the main research station for the development of the project housing the nano swarm known as the wall rider and as well as many unwilling mental patients and other random test subjects brought to the asylum under the impression of receiving therapy who would be made into subjects to the engine in a controlled environment. Whilst the Arizona Towers would instead be to test the effects of the engine on unsuspecting and uncontrolled environment of people. After many failed attempts, the Murkoff Corporation eventually succeeded and a man by the name of William Hope eventually was able to enter this state of mind. He was able to successfully culture a psychic link between himself and the swarm. However, things did not go as well as planned and very quickly went sour as Hope used the wall rider to begin to destroy the facility and everyone in it. And on top of this, because of the data breach caused by a whistleblower by the name of Wayland Park at the facility, the Mount Massive Asylum was now at risk at being revealed to the public for what it really was. After finding this out, Park was eventually made into an unwilling test subject as they had done to most of those who leaked information or tried to go against the company. However, he is eventually able to escape the facility. Meanwhile, Murkoff had bigger fish to fry as they make an attempt to contain the wall rider and recover Dr. Warnick from the underground lab being trapped there by the entity itself. Eventually, after the massive slaughter of the Murkoff private military contractors, they are able to reach Warnick, however, eventually encounter the wall rider and its newly obtained mobile host of Miles Upshaw. A journalist that had come to investigate the leaked information by Wayland Park and accidentally become host to the Wall Rider Swarm. The Wall Rider now containing the consciousness of hope but using Miles as a host to sustain it proceeds to massacre the PMC troops before leaving the facility. The Murkoff Corporation had failed and failed terribly. With one weapon they had tried to create to defend the world now unleashed uncontrolled on the world. Sometime shortly after these events, the Wall Rider discards of Miles' body and returns to the body of Hope as it is revealed that he did not die or was possibly revived by the swarm. The Wall Rider then travelled to Hope's mother who was living in a caravan. Once he arrived, the Swarm discovers that two Murkoff agents were assigned to determine the possible location of the Swarm. Talking with his mother about William or Billy, eventually Tiffany Hope, his mother, reveals that she had sold her son to the Murkoff Corporation for a considerable amount of money. After hearing this revelation, Billy sprung forth and yelled at his mother that he had loved her. He felt greatly betrayed and the two agents began their escape as the wall rider began ripping her apart. Soon in the vicious attack by the wall rider, the caravan was destroyed when some action of the entity caused the fuel tank to explode. Billy's body was now completely destroyed and without a host. And without a host, the agents believed that the wall rider had now been destroyed along with hope. However, unbeknownst to them, the swarm survived by using the host of a nearby ant colony, now showing that the swarm could take almost any host it chooses, as it now has the consciousness of Billy to sustain its more regular functions and a host to maintain it indefinitely. The wall rider now with no family and no purpose, chooses its life to continue a rampage against the Murkoff Corporation destroying as many people and places associated with the highly unethical and borderline evil company as it could. In a stroke of bad luck for the company and the people involved, the Wall Rider Swarm moved to the Arizona test site named the Temple Gate Testing Grounds, the second more unregulated Murkoff project site. 
the Wall Rider successfully began to destroy and damage the radio towers and microwave emitters set up by Murkoff, which led to a version of the morphogenic engine being unleashed upon the residents of the area. And because the radio towers were damaged due to the Wall Rider attack, the signal being projected was no longer weak and regulated, but powerful and sporadic with continuous flashes of morphogenic lights, bringing about horrific cases of delusion and insanity below in the Temple Gate region, leading to the events of Outlast 2. And on top of all of this, the final nail in the coffin for Murkoff came when the escaped Wayland Park was able to obtain a large number of documents and video evidence of the going-ons at Mount Massive and leaked it to the public. The wider world now knew what Murkoff was and what it had been doing of these many decades. And with the future of Murkoff uncertain and again at the point of breaking, it seems that they had created the very thing they sought out to destroy in the first place. Fear. But what other videos would you guys like to see? If you have any ideas or have any questions you would like answered, please meet me down in the comments. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and go check out Lauren Explained on Twitter and Discord. If you would like to support myself and the channel's content, as well as get access to behind the scenes and early content, as well as other awards, you can become a channel member. I hope you guys did enjoy the video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.